in number nine, it says that we're going to start with parallelogram ABCD. We have BF perpendicular to AFD and DE perpendicular to BEC. We want to prove that BEDF is a rectangle. So I made a, I copied that picture because I wanted to bring it down as I go through the proof. So let's, it's going to take up some room. Let's slide it over. Oh, I think it captures the, well, we'll stop there. I didn't know if it captured the whole screen. So anyways, so I'm going to highlight because it starts with parallelogram ABCD. So let's highlight parallelogram ABCD. So the larger quadrilateral is a parallelogram, okay? And we want to show that BEDF, the quadrilateral within that parallelogram, is also, or is a rectangle, okay? So it must also be a parallelogram. Okay, so I wrote the Gibbons in, and to do this question, well, we got to think about first what the properties of a rectangle are, or what's different between the rectangle and a parallelogram. Well, the green, once I can show that both pair of opposite sides are congruent, we'll have a parallelogram, and then a parallelogram with one right angle, okay, is a rectangle. So in order to get both pair of opposite sides congruent, okay, I'm going to use the triangles there to help me get both pair of opposite sides congruent. So let's start with, I'm going to highlight those triangles in blue. So this triangle right here and this triangle right here. So I know it's already marked um, within this picture, but we do need to state, so number two, oops, number two, pen, I want a thinner pen. That, that angle is a right angle. Even though it's marked, we need to state it. So angle one's a right angle, and also angle two's a right angle because BF is perpendicular to um, AFD, and then I'm going to put a 3 and a 4 are also right angles. So angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4, they're all right angles. And that's because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. Okay, and if I want to prove those two triangles congruent, I'm going to want uh, angle one congruent to angle three. So angle one congruent to angle three, because all right angles are congruent. All right, so that's an A. Okay, because remember that orange. The quadrilateral highlighted in orange, quadrilateral uh, A, B, C, D, it stated that it was a parallelogram. So I'm going to state that A, B is also congruent to C, D. And I'm also going to state at this time that C, B all the way across, um, so from here all the way over, because it's broken up into two, I will note it this way. CB is also congruent to AD. I don't know if I need it, but I'm just going to write it in case I do. Even if it's extra and correct, we still won't lose credit. So AB congruent to CD, and then BC congruent to AD, because opposite sides of a a parallelogram are congruent, okay? 
So looking at those blue triangles, we have an angle and a side. I'm going to put a 5, let's grab a different color pen because you can't see orange or orange. Uh, a 5 here and a 6 here because opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. And now those blue triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. So the one on the left I'm going to name as AFB. And that is congruent to, remember, 5 is congruent to 6, so A is congruent to C. And F is congruent to E, so that would be C, E, D by angle, angle, side. All right, so now that we have proven those sides congruent, we know that A, or I'm sorry, BF, one, two, three, is congruent to DE, one, two, three. All right, by CPCTC. So AF, I'm sorry, BF is congruent to ED by CPCTC. So I already have the right angles within that quadrilateral in green, and we have one pair of opposite sides congruent. What we don't have congruent, and I'll grab a highlighter in turquoise here, is this side congruent to this side. If I know that the length of the whole segment, so right here, is congruent, uh, if I could subtract this segment right here, if I knew that EC was congruent to AF, I could, by subtraction, then this segment right here would be congruent to that segment right there. And we do know that AF is congruent to EC right here because that's also a side of our congruent triangle. So I'm going to go back and add that. Not only is BF congruent to ED, but AF is congruent to CE by CPCTC. OK, and we already have that other segment we want to subtract. We already have AD congruent to BC right here. So we're going to take these two segments now and subtract. So number eight, and that would tell us that BE is congruent to FD. So that's by the subtraction property. All right, so now we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now we have both pair of opposite sides congruent. So now we can say, number nine, that BEDF is a parallelogram. Remember, before we say it's a rectangle, we have to show it's a parallelogram. So it is a parallelogram. You can use the if, but I'm going to, you know, if then statement, but I'm going to say that a quadrilateral with both pair of opposite sides congruent Quadrilateral with both pair of opposite sides congruent is a parallelogram. Because this parallelogram has one right angle, even though we've got two marks, it just needs one, it's a rectangle. So we finish in 10 steps by saying that BEDF is a rectangle. 
And that's because a parallelogram with one right angle is a rectangle.